the years of lead was a period of socio-political turmoil in Italy that lasted from the late 1960s into the early 1980s, marked by a wave of terrorism. Among the possible origins of the name are a reference to the vast number of bullets fired, or the 1981 film Marianne and Juliana by Margareta von Trotter, of which the Italian title is Annie di Piombo. The left-wing autonomous movement lasted from 1968 until the end of the 1970s. The years of lead began with the shooting death of the policeman Antonio Anaruma in 1969 and the Piazza Fontana bombing. Widespread unrest of 1960s and 1970s. There was widespread social conflict and unprecedented acts of terrorism carried out by both right and left-wing paramilitary groups. An attempt to endorse the neo-fascist Italian social movement by the Tambroni cabinet led to rioting and was short-lived. Widespread labor unrest and the collaboration of countercultural student activist groups with working-class factory workers and pro-labor radical, leftist organizations such as Pateri Operaio and Lotta Continua culminated in the so-called Autunno Caldo, or Hot Autumn, of 1969, a massive series of strikes in factories and industrial centers in northern Italy. Student strikes and labor strikes, often led by leftist or Marxist activists, became increasingly common. The Christian Democrats were instrumental in the Italian Socialist Party gaining power in the 1960s and they created a coalition. The assassination of the Christian Democrat leader Aldo Moro in 1978 ended the strategy of historic compromise between the DC and the Italian Communist Party. The assassination was carried out by the Red Brigades, then led by Mario Moretti. Between 1969 and 1981, nearly 2,000 murders were attributed to political violence in the form of bombings, assassinations, and street warfare between rival militant factions. Although political violence has decreased substantially in Italy since that time, instances of sporadic violent crimes continue because of the re-emergence of anti-immigrant, neo-fascist, and militant communist groups. In 2000, a parliamentary commission report from the Olive Tree, a centre-left political coalition, concluded that the strategy of tension had been supported by the United States to stop the PCR and to a certain degree also the PSI from reaching executive power in the country. On 4 May 2007 the Italian Parliament declared the 9th of May as a memorial day dedicated to the victims of terrorism. Asylum, France the Mitterrand Doctrine, which was established in 1985 by then French President François Mitterrand, stated that Italian far-left terrorists who fled to France and who were convicted of violent acts in Italy, excluding active, actual, bloody terrorism during the years of lead, would receive asylum and would not be subject to extradition to Italy. They would be integrated into French society. The act was announced on 21 April 1985 at the 65th Congress of the Human Rights League, stating that Italian criminals who had given up their violent pasts and had fled to France would be protected from extradition to Italy. Italian refugees, who took part in terrorist action before 1981, have broken links with the infernal machine in which they participated, have begun a second phase of their lives have integrated into French society. I told the Italian government that they were safe from any sanction by the means of extradition. Brazil Some Italian citizens accused of terrorist acts have found refuge in Brazil such as Cesare Batista and others former members of the armed Proletarians for Communism, a far-left militant and terrorist group which committed acts of illegality and crimes in Italy during the period known as Years of Lead. Nicaragua Some Italian far-left activists found political asylum in Nicaragua, including Alessio Casimiri who took part in the kidnapping of Aldo Moro. Chronology 1969 Public protests Public protests shook Italy during 1969, with the autonomous student movement being particularly active, leading to the occupation of the Fiat automobile factory in Milan. 
Mario Capanna of the New Left Movement, was prominent at the time, along with members of Pateri Operaio and Autonomia Operaia, and Lotta Continua. Death of Antonio Anaruma On 19 November 1969, Antonio Anaruma, a Milanese policeman, was assassinated during a riot of far-left demonstrators. He was the first public official to die in the ensuing wave of violence referred to as the Years of Lead. Piazza Fontana bombing the monument to Victor Emmanuel II. The Banca Nazionale del Lavoro in Rome and the Banca Commercial Italiana and the Banca Nazionale dell'Agricoltura in Milan were bombed in December. Local police arrested 80 or so suspects from left-wing groups, including Giuseppe Pinelli, an anarchist initially blamed for the bombing, and Pietro Valpreda. Their guilt was denied by left-wing members, especially by members of the student movement, then prominent in Milan's universities, as they believed that the bombing was carried out by fascists. Following the death of Giuseppe Pinelli, who died on 15 December while in police custody, the radical left-wing newspaper Lotta Continua started a campaign accusing police officer Luigi Calabrese of Pinelli's murder. The accusation of wrongful death at the hands of the police was eventually determined to be false by the state, but only after many years of investigation. Meanwhile, the anarchist Valpreda and five others were convicted and jailed for the bombing. They were later released after three years of preventive detention. Over a 36-year period, numerous suspects were investigated, with no convictions. The identity of the perpetrators remains unknown to this day. They ordered that the inquiry remain secret, because of the unfavorable light that it could shed on other terrorist organizations. The inquiry was discovered after a firefight between Red Brigade forces and Italian police at Robbiano di Medaglia in October 1974. The cover-up was exposed in 2000 by then-Italian President Giovanni Pellegrino. 1970 The Gold Borghese in December The neo-fascist coup, dubbed the Gold Borghese, was planned by several far-right leaders and supported by members of the Corpo Forestale dello Stato, along with the right-aligned entrepreneurs and industrialists. The Black Prince, Junio Valerio Borghese, took part in it. The coup, called off at the last moment, was discovered by the press and publicly released a few months later. 1971 Assassination of Alessandro Flores On 26 March 1971 Alessandro Flores was assassinated in Genoa by a unit of the October 22 Group, a far-left terrorist organization. An amateur photographer had taken a photo of the killer that enabled police to identify the terrorists. The group was investigated and more members arrested. Some fled to Milan and joined the Gruppi Diazzi and Partigiano, and later the Red Brigades. The Red Brigades considered the group Group 022 October its predecessor and in April 1974, it kidnapped Judge Mario Sossi in an effort to free the arrested member. The effort was unsuccessful. Years later, the Red Brigades killed the Judge Francesco Coco on June 8, 1976 out of revenge, along with his two police escorts. Giovanni Sapinara and Antioco Dian. 1972 Assassination of Luigi Calabrese On 17 May 1972, police officer Luigi Calabrese, recipient of the gold medal of the Italian Republic for Civil Valor, was assassinated in Milan. Authorities initially focused on suspects in Lotta Continua, before detaining two neo-fascist activists, Gianni Nardi and Bruno Stefano, along with the German Gudrun Kais, in 1974. They were ultimately released. Sixteen years later, Adriano Sofri, Giorgio Petro Stefani, Ovidia Bompressa, and Leonardo Marino were arrested in Milan following Marino's confession to the murder. Their trial finally established their guilt in the organization and carrying out the murder. 
Pitano bombing on 31 May 1972, three Italian carabinieri were killed in Pitano in a bombing, blamed on Lotte Continua. Officers of the carabinieri were later indicted and convicted for manipulating the investigation in false directions. Judge Casson identified Order Nuovo member Vincenzo Vinciguerra as the culprit who had planted the Pitano bomb. The neo-fascist terrorist Vincenzo Vinciguerra, arrested in the 1980s for the bombing in Pitano, declared to Magistrate Felice Casson that this false flag attack had been intended to force the Italian state to declare a state of emergency and to become more authoritarian. Vinciguerra explained how the SISMI military intelligence agency had protected him, allowing him to escape to Francois, Spain. Casson's investigation revealed that the right-wing organization Order Nuovo had collaborated with the Italian military secret service, CID. Together, they had engineered the Pitano terror and then wrongly blamed the militant Italian far-left, the Red Brigades. He confessed and testified that he had been covered by an entire network of sympathizers in Italy and abroad who had ensured that after the attack he could escape. A whole mechanism came into action, Vince Aguera recalled, that is, the Carabinieri, the Minister of the Interior, the Customs Services and the Military and Civilian Intelligence Services accepted the ideological reasoning behind the attack, 1973 the Primaval fire and the 16th of April 1973 attack by members of Pateri Operaio on the house of neo-fascist Italian social movement militant Mario Mario Mattei resulted in his two sons, aged 8 and 20, being burned alive. Milan police command bombing during the 17th of May 1973 ceremony honoring Luigi Calabresi, in which the interior minister was present, Gianfranca Bertoli, an anarchist, threw a bomb that killed four and injured 45. In 1990, it was discovered that Bertoli, who had been convicted of the bombing, was an CID informant and member of Gladio. The secret services claimed that this was only a coincidence. A magistrate investigating the assassination attempt of Mariano Ruma found that Bertoli's files were incomplete. General Gianna Delio Maletti, head of the CID from 1971 to 1975, was convicted in absentia in 1990 for obstruction of justice in the Mariano Ruma case. 1974 Piazza della Loggia bombing In May 1974, a bomb exploded during an anti-fascist demonstration in Brescia, killing eight and wounding over 90. In 2005, the Court of Cessation issued an arrest warrant against Delfo Zorzi, a former Orden Nuovo member currently living in Japan. Planned neo-fascist coup count Edgardo Sonner said in his memoirs that in July 1974, he visited the Central Intelligence Agency station chief in Rome to inform him of preparations for a neo-fascist coup. Asking what the United States government would do in case of such a coup, Sonner wrote that he was told the United States would have supported any initiative tending to keep the communists out of government, General Maletti declared, in 2001, that he had not known about Sogno's relationship with the CIA and had not been informed about the coup, known as Golp Bianco, led by Randolfo Pacciardi bombing of Italicus train on August 4, 1974. Twelve died and 105 were injured in the bombing of the Italicus Roma Brennero Express at San Benedetto Val di Sambro. Arrest of Vito Michelli General Vito Michelli, chief of the SIOS Military Intelligence Agency in 1969, and head of the CID from 1970 to 1974, was arrested in 1974 on charges of conspiracy against the state following his arrest. The Italian secret services were reorganized by a 24 October 1977 law in an attempt to reassert civilian control over the intelligence agencies. 
the SID was divided into the current SISMI, the SISDE, and the CESIS, which was to directly coordinate with the Prime Minister of Italy. An Italian Parliamentary Committee on Secret Services Control was created at the same time. Arrest of Red Brigade's leaders in 1974 Some leaders of the Red Brigades, including Renato Curcio and Alberto Franceschini, were arrested. But new leadership continued the war against the Italian right-wing establishment with increased fervor. The year before, Pateri Operaio had disbanded, although Autonomia Operaio carried on in its wake. Lotta Continua also dissolved in 1976, although the magazine struggled on for several years. From remnants of Lotta Continua and similar groups, the terror organization Prima Linea emerged. 1976 Prima Linea, an emerging terrorist organization on 29 April 1976, Enrico Pedinovi was killed in Milan by the organization Prima Linea. This was the first assassination conducted by Prima Linea. 1977 On 12 March 1977, a Turin policeman Giuseppe Ciotta was killed by far-left terrorist organization Prima Linea. On 14 May, in Milan, some activists from a far-left organization pulled out their pistols and began to fire on the police killing policeman Antonio Custra. A photographer took a photo of an activist shooting at the police. This year was called the time of the P-38, referring to the Walther P-38 pistol. 1978 – Kidnapping and assassination of Aldo Moro On 16 March 1978, Aldo Moro was kidnapped by the Red Brigades, and five of his bodyguards killed. The Red Brigades were a militant leftist group, then led by Mario Moretti. Aldo Moro was a left-leaning Christian Democrat who served several times as Prime Minister. Before his murder he was trying to include the Italian Communist Party, headed by Enrico Berlinger, in the government through a deal called the Historic Compromise. The PCI was the largest Communist Party in Western Europe. This was largely because of its non-extremist and pragmatic stance, its growing independence from Moscow and its Euro-Communist doctrine. The PCI was especially strong in areas such as Emilia-Romagna, where it had stable government positions and mature practical experience, which may have contributed to a more pragmatic approach to politics. The Red Brigades were fiercely opposed by the Communist Party and trade unions. A few left-wing politicians even used the condescending expression, comrades who do wrong. The circumstances surrounding Aldo Moro's murder have never been made clear, but the consequences included that fact that PCI did not gain executive power. Investigative journalist Carmine Pecorelli was assassinated on March 20, 1979. In a May 1978 article, he had drawn connections between Aldo Moreau's kidnapping and Gladio. Moreau's assassination was followed by a large clampdown on the social movement, including the arrest of many members of Autonomia Operaia, including arrest A. Scalzone and political philosopher Tony Negri. 1979 The year with the most assassinations on 19 January 1979, Turin policeman Giuseppe Laurisa was killed by the Prima Linea organization. On 29 January, Emilio Alessandrini was killed in Milan by Prima Linea. On 9 March, university student Emmanuel Irilli was killed in Turin by Prima Linea. On 20 March, investigative journalist Mino Pecorelli was gunned down in his car in Rome. Prime Minister Giulio Andriotti and Mafia boss Gattano Badalamenta were sentenced in 2002 to 24 years in prison for the murder, though the sentences were overturned the following year. On 13 July, in Druinta, policeman Bartolomeo Mana was killed by Prima Linea. On 18 July, Carmine Civitate was killed in Turin, by Prima Linea. On 21 September, Carlo Giuliano was killed in Turin by a group of Prima Linea. 1980 More assassinations On 5 February 1980, in Monza, Paolo Pauletti was
was killed by Prima Linea, on 12 February, in Rome, at the La Sapienza, University, Vittorio Bachelet. Vice President of the Superior Council of Magistrates and former President of the Roman Catholic Association Nazion Catholica, was killed by the Red Brigades. On 19 March, in Milan, Judge Guido Galli was killed by a group of Prima Linea. On 10 April, in Turin, Giuseppe Pichu near Mondale Polgard was killed by Ronde Proletari. The Bologna massacre on 2 August, a bomb killed 85 people and wounded more than 200 in Bologna. Known as the Bologna massacre, the blast destroyed a large portion of the city's railway station. This was found to be a fascist bombing, mainly organized by the NAR, who had ties with the Roman criminal organization Banda della Magliana. 1981 On 17 December 1981, James L. Dozier, an American general and the deputy commander of NATO's South European forces based in Verona, was kidnapped by Red Brigades. He was freed in Padua on 28 January 1982 by the nuclear operativa Centrale di Sicurezza, an Italian police anti-terrorist task force. 1982 The Salerno Massacre On October 21, 1982, a group of Red Brigade's terrorists attacked a bank in Turin, killing two guards. Antonio Pedio and Sebastiano Dalio. On 26 August 1982, a group of Red Brigade's terrorists attacked a military troop convoy in Salerno. In the attack, Corporal Antonio Palumbo and policeman Antonio Bendira and Mario De Marco were killed. The terrorists escaped. 1984 On 23 December 1984, a bomb in a train between Florence and Rome killed 16 and wounded more than 200. In 1989, the mafiosi Giuseppe Calla and four others defendants were sentenced to life imprisonment for the bombing. According to prosecutors, the far-right organizations conspired with the mafia and the Camorra to carry out the attack. 1987 On 20 March 1987, Licio Giorgera, a general in the Italian Air Force, was assassinated by the Red Brigades in Rome. 1988 On 16 April 1988, Senator Roberto Ruffilli was assassinated in an attack by a group of Red Brigades in Philae. Continued violence in the late 1990s, early 2000s, a resurgence of Red Brigade terrorism led to the assassination of labor law consultants and experts, Massimo D'Antona and Marco Biaggi. On 20 May 1999, Massimo D'Antona, consultant to the Ministry of Labor, was assassinated in an attack by a group of terrorists of the Red Brigade. Group BRPCC, in Rome. On 19 March 2002, Marco Biaggi, consultant to the Ministry of Labor, was assassinated in an attack by a group of terrorists of the Red Brigade, in Bologna. On 2 March 2003, Emmanuel Petri, state policeman, was assassinated by a group of Red Brigade's terrorists, near Castiglian Fiorentino. In 2005 some suspected terrorists were arrested, known as the New Red Brigade. AIDS. On 13 June the court in Milan condemned 14 terrorists. The leader was sentenced to 15 years in jail. Three suspected terrorists were found not guilty. Terrorist organizations in Italy. Red Brigades. Prima Linea. Gruppo 22 Ottober. Orden Nuovo. National Vanguard. Nuclei Armati Revolutionary. Bibliography. Anis Santo Ball and Adalgiza Giorgio speaking out and silencing. Culture, Society and Politics in Italy in the 1970s ISBN 9781-904350-729. Giovanni Fasanella Giovanni Pellegrino. La Guerra Civila, a Book of President of Anti-Terrorism Commission of Italian Parliament. 
Per la vitime del terrorismo nell'Italia Repubblicana, Istituto Poligrafico e Zecca dello Stato Libraria dello Stato, Istituto Poligrafico e Zecca dello Stato SPA, ISBN 978882402868, 4 edited from the Office of Republic President.